Morning, Lakeview. How are we this morning? All right, I'll take that. Uh, Will you guys stand with me as we begin our service this morning? Is it? Oh, there we go. Call, start with our call to worship, um, which hopefully will be on the screen. Am I good, John? Okay. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. seated. Good morning. I want to welcome all of you today who are worshiping with us in the sanctuary, as well as those of you who are worshiping online. I want to draw your attention to the bulletins. We have those available in baskets at the back of the sanctuary on the pillars um, at the very back of the um, pew area. And we have bulletins available for both our adult worshipers as well as for our kiddos. We also have our communication cards available, and they are on the clipboards at the ends of the pews. And that is a place for you to share information with us. So if you are new or have changing information with regard to your contact information, or if you have a prayer request or a praise that you would like to share with us, that is the place to do so. And it is also the place where we answer our question of the week. 
Now yesterday, Ms. Jan and I had the privilege of having our kiddos for Luke 252 Kids Day, and we walked down to the park, and we got to stop and look at all of the little flowers that are coming up, and there were so many of them. And so my question for you is, when spring has sprung, what about God's creation makes you go, wow? When spring has sprung, what about God's creation makes you go, wow? So for some announcements for this coming week and the weeks after, um, we are going to have an outdoor work day here at church this next Saturday, April 20th, from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. And we have sign-ups for that at the back of the sanctuary on our clipboard in the Won't You Be Their Neighbor area. Then we have on the following Saturday, April 27th from 9 until 1, we have our Matthew 25 drive through donation day. And this is if you're doing spring cleaning and you have some gently used clothing that you would like to donate, bring it by the Matthew 25 next Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. until 1. And we have some of these cards that you could hand out to your friends or neighbors, and they are located on the back counter of the sanctuary. Then next Sunday, April 21st, is going to be our Celebration and Vision Sunday. So come join us as we talk about what our last year looked like and what our hopes are for the coming year. And then on Sunday, April 28th, we are going to be celebrating Matt and Liza Chitwood's baby and with a baby shower at 3 p.m. in Hampton Hall. They are registered on babylist.com, and um, if you're looking to purchase diapers, they're using Honest brand diapers and wipes, and those are available at Target. All right, as I invite our ushers to come forward to receive our offering, let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day and for your faithfulness. In an expression of worship, we give this offering to you. Please use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence so that it may be a great blessing to many. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so
Sad. 
found that saved a wretch like me. I once was a lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. seated as we go to prayer. You ever had those moments when you're just overwhelmed by the grace of God? I don't know if it's because I was gone for a week, I miss everybody, or I feel like I missed out on church or whatever, but I'm a hot mess right now. I'm experiencing God's grace and mercy and love in these days, and I'm grateful for that. And, and we need God's grace, amen? I was uh, texting with uh, some friends of mine last night, one of whom is in the back row, uh, commiserating on events of the world and things that are happening. This morning as I woke up, kind of overwhelmed with coming back from vacation and just the things that hit your mind, thinking about people in my life and in this church that are struggling, we're, we just find ourselves always in the midst of the realities of being human. Talking with, with Nicole and Ryan about Ryan's brother-in-law, Ben Beckel, who is in a, he's a pastor in Grangeville, a Nazarene church, was in a significant car accident, is doing well with just all of the realities of life that 
things are happening. If we were to take time and go around, we all have these things that we're experiencing. From a coming baby with Liza and Matt this week to people who are journeying with loved ones and friends who are at the end of life. Like this is where we find ourselves. And while it can be hard to talk about those things, we have to hold those because that's where grace meets us, is in the reality of the human experience. And especially as a people of God, if we cannot find that together as a community, we are in trouble. Because from day to day, we will have experiences that happen and things that come and, and life and the journey of life will continue. And we need each other to journey and to make it. And we need to experience God's grace. So as we go to prayer this morning, my invitation to you is the same as every week. These altars are open. Reverend Gene Chandorf will be to my left, your right, to anoint you. If you need anointing for healing physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, whatever you need, I invite you to come and bring that to the Lord through Gene, who will pray for you and anoint you. If you need to bring a burden or a praise to the altar, these altars are open for us. So let us go to prayer and bring the fullness of our life and experience to the Lord. The heaviness we carry, the burdens, the joy, whatever it is, bring that to God this morning and let his grace envelop you. God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to be gathered as a body. God, I'm so thankful for this community, this body of believers, those who have been here for a long time and those who are new, even maybe even today. Lord, you breathe us in. You call us to this place on purpose and for a reason. And that reason is to worship you, to be drawn up into the reality of what it means to be your children, to experience the radical and transforming grace in our lives so that we can become more like your son, Jesus, and be sent into the world to be a beacon of hope for those who need it. So God, we come to you expecting you to meet us here, knowing that you will, knowing that in all things you go before us. And that on this day, Lord, nothing is different, but yet everything is the same. We can come in confidence knowing that you are here as we draw near. So would you draw us in? Would you fill us with the fullness of your spirit? Would you continue the transforming work in our lives this day? In these following moments, uh, in the quietness of your heart or out loud, would you lift your prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving to God this morning? God, we ask that you'd receive the prayers of your people. May they rise as a sweet aroma to you, and may you continue to cultivate in our hearts a spirit of gratitude. God, may we see the ways in which you are working in our world daily. May we be looking for those places where your hope is breaking through as spring brings forth new life. God, would you help us to see the things that are signs and glimpses of your hope and your love and your grace and your mercy at work in our world. God, when all seems dark, 
when the tomb seems sealed. May we remember we are a resurrection people, that we are a people who recognize and believe in new life. In these next moments, again, in the quietness of your heart or out loud, lift those prayers of intercession, those needs that you carry for those in your family, your sphere of influence, this community, the world. Let's lift those prayers of intercession to God this morning, knowing that he hears us and knowing that Jesus, his son, intercedes for us at the right hand of God. God, we lift up Pastor Ben Beckel, a dear friend and family member of Ryan and, and Nicole. Ask God that you would continue to be with him as he heals from this accident this week. On his way to district assembly, Lord, doing the work you've called him to do. Thank you for the ways in which you have shown up, the examples of your provision in the midst of that. And Lord, be with him, especially on the long road of recovery with his, his kids as they were there and witnessed that. I pray that you would continue to minister to them. God, I also pray for uh, John and Nancy's daughter, Maris, as she continues to undergo tests. Uh, a lot of still unknowns, which brings with it its own sense of anxiety and fear. pray that you would be with them. God, thank you for the testimony of peace that Maris has. In the midst of this, pray that you would be with John and Nancy as God, as parents, it's, uh, that is hard to walk with and navigate these situations with our kids. Pray that you would be with them and watch over them. God, we ask that you would continue to be with us in the remainder of our time together. Be with Pastor Denine as she comes and breaks the bread of life open to us. God, we thank you for the gift of this community of faith the opportunity we have to be in relationship with each other, to journey together, to sharpen each other. God, I pray that you would continue to help us pursue what you have called us to do and to be, which is to be disciples of Jesus, to make disciples and to love our neighbors. And God, in all things, we give you praise and glory. And God, would you remind us of that prayer you taught your disciples to pray as we pray these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Kids, come down and meet Pastor Deneen out front here. Ooh.
what happens when you preach like twice a year instead of every week. It's just easier for the Okay, so in in First John, you guys, um, I wasn't here last week, but you heard Pastor Michelle kick that off, and um, I think that in this scripture that she uh, she gave many of us assignments for what we were to preach on, and I felt like I got the best one. I felt like I got the best scripture. Let's read together First John, chapter three, verses one through seven. Stand for the reading of the word. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared that he might take away our sins. And to him, in him, is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. We all have a deep sense of Longing, I think, to belong. Um, We wait for invitations. I get excited every time I get an invitation, even if it might be something I don't want to go to. It's just fun to get the invitation and open it up. We wait for the ding on our phone that tells us we have a message coming in, a text message or an email. And I have to confess that if I post something on Facebook, I check frequently to see how many people liked it. Does anybody else do that? Oh, good. (laughs) <laughs> so, um, I like to keep track of how many people like what I have to say, and that's part of my longing uh, to belong, part of my longing for community. I want to know that people hear me and see me, and I know that you probably feel the same way. Belonging helps us define who we are, where we're headed, and what we are becoming. And God's Word gives us some pretty Um, explicit ways that we can follow him and live in a life of holiness. Now, when I think about holiness, I, my dad, when I was a teenager, gave me a visual of it because I had a hard time understanding. Does anybody else ever have a hard time with that concept of sanctification and holiness? And um, it was very simple, but my dad said to me, When you are saved, when you ask Jesus into your heart, you get all of him. He comes in and lives. But when you are sanctified, that's when he gets all of you. And I try to keep that in my mind sometimes. I have to do a little check sometimes to see how I'm doing. Does God still have all of me? What peace of... You know, we all try to hang on to things at times, and sometimes we just need to keep that in mind. So God's word is powerful. In uh, the very first verse of this chapter, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the sons of God. Lavished, like we were talking to the kids. I don't know how often I actually remember and think of God's love just pouring over me in such a way that it is so overwhelming that I feel lavished, I feel like I belong, I know that he loves me. But this is a message that we need to own as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and those who walk with him, we need to own the message that his love is poured out on us. No matter what else is going on, we can always count on the powerful presence of his love for us. We belong with him. When we're children of God, I love the Gospel of John in verse 121. It says, to all who have received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children 
of God. If we've received him, this is who we are. We are his children. Now, maybe your earthly parents were not great parents. Maybe they hurt you. Maybe hurtful words were said to you. Maybe you've endured prejudice or actions that were hurtful to you. Maybe you felt abandoned, betrayed, hurt by someone very close to you. Maybe you have a truckload of stuff that you carry around with you that weighs you down with guilt and shame and regret. But God word, God's word says clearly, to all who have received and believed in him, these are the children of God. In September, it'll be 20 years. I asked Katie if I could tell the story, so I've told you. It will be 20 years since three small children came to live at our house. They were six, seven, and nine. And at the time that they came, um, they had a, a name, a label. It was foster children. And there was a long process to go through before um, the adoption process could actually be completed, and it took a year. And, but it was almost a year later to the day that we were standing in a courtroom, and there was a judge, and there were social workers there, and all kinds of uh, fun people there. And um, even though we felt like we were a family, because these children had been ours since the day we picked them up and brought them home. But legally, we weren't a family. And that's why we were in court. So the judge asked a lot of questions to the social workers and the official people that were there. And then the judge asked my husband and I a lot of questions, which we answered. And then he looked at the children, and he was going to let them talk. Do you want these parents to be your parents? And immediately, Bill and I are looking at each other, and all we can think of is all the time we said, no, no, you can't do that. No electronics, no more cookies, no more sugar, no, 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 no. That's all we can think of. I have one little story, just because it's fun. Um, when, the, when Katie, Kevin, and Erica came to live with us, they were all, like, super sensitive to sugar. I mean, super sensitive to sugar. So we didn't have any at, at home, hardly ever. We rarely had dessert. We rarely had cookies. But Bill and I weren't used to that. We'd been married for a lot of years, eating whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. And so one day, I had bought some Oreos and stuck them in a pantry. And boy, I wanted one of those really bad. And so the kids were in uh, the living room playing, and, and we were in the kitchen, and we had an island there. And, and I said, come on now. We can have some Oreos now. They're watching TV. So, so we go in the kitchen. I open up the Oreos. The, the kids heard the rattle of the paper. They start running. I duck behind the island. <laughs> Bill and I are shoving the Oreos in our mouth. And the kids are like, what are you eating? We're not eating anything. But that's how it was in our house. We had to hide anything that had red dye or sugar. We had to hide. And so um, I digress, but that's just a great story. Um, but the children had the right to choose us. We had already chosen them, but the judge was saying to them, do you want to choose these people to be your family? They could have said no, and it would have been all over. Katie, it's too late to say no. <laughs> but God chooses us. We are his children, and we have the right to be called sons and daughters of the living God. He's calling us to him, but we have to say yes. And I think that um, it's so important that we keep that in mind. To receive his lavish love, we have to say yes to him. Uh, the next verse says, dear children, or dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In other words, we're going to become like him. We don't know exactly what all that's going to be, but we know that when we see him, we're going to be like him. So what's ahead for the children of God? 
Does anybody else ever feel like sometimes it's just a great big unknown? It's a big unknown for us. And there are so many times in the scripture that the kingdom of God or eternity or heaven, all these things are mentioned. And whatever our human expectations are, God's kingdom will totally defy all of our expectations. But here's what we do know. When he appears, we'll be like him. We'll see him as he is. Verse 3 says, all who have hope, this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Okay, so he's talking about lawlessness, the definition of sin, the nature of sin. But what law is he talking about? Breaking what law? What's the most important law? Speak a little louder. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love others. We hear this from Pastor Nate all the time. I wish I knew how many times I'd heard that from you. But I, I love it because it just reminds me I need to love him. Loving God is something that comes a lot more naturally to me sometimes than loving my neighbor. I like my neighbors. But being neighborly, that's something that we focus on a lot in our church, and I think it's really important. Love God and love others. Jesus came so that we could be forgiven of our sins and so that we can become more and more like him. When we're working through this short letter of John, he was writing it primarily to a church in Ephesus that was being attacked by false teachers. And the Gnostics were saying that your spirit could be connected to God, but since your body is already evil, you might as well do whatever you want with it. And John is saying that's not the way it works. You can't straddle both sides of that fence. You can't claim to be connected to God and then do whatever you want to do. And I feel like um, I've known people. In my, I can remember a specific individual that said to me, I love Jesus but I'm going to do whatever I want. And we can have that attitude, but that, does, that means that we're missing out on all of the things that Jesus has for us and how he wants to live in our heart and lavish his love upon us. Verse 6 says, No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. Since Jesus says that the most important thing for us is to love God and love people, whatever is in our lives that might be them. Every now and then, it's good for us to take inventory and think of places where maybe we're not as loving as we ought to be. Anybody have any people in their life labeled extra grace required? <laughs> I have some family. I'll talk about my family. I have some family labeled extra grace required. But Jesus is saying, love all the way. Don't claim to be connected to me and then go do whatever you want. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning, and we want to remember to keep those loving things in our life. John makes it clear that we can't claim to be connected to God and continually sin, pretending it doesn't matter. If we're going to live a life of holiness, filled with the Holy Spirit, we don't want to keep sinning. We want to be like him. Verse 7 says, Dear children, don't let anybody lead you astray. He who does right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil. When we belong to him, when we live by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able to be holy because he is holy. We want to stay away from those things that are sin. Verse 9 says, No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. God's DNA, it's in me, it's in you. And that's the reason we don't have to continue living in a life of sin. John is saying holiness matters, prayerfulness matters, compassion for your brother, that matters. And this is how the children of God live life. Um, I went to district assembly for the Northwest District in Washington last week. One of my good friends was being ordained there. Um, 
which for those of you that don't know, that's when someone is committing their life to ministry and where elders lay hands and pray on them and then they are commissioned to go and do what God has called them to do. So I go to district assembly and I, um, I don't mind doing laundry, but I don't like to iron. So um, I pulled out some of my clothes to take and I put them in the suitcase and by the time I got to the Tri-Cities in Washington, um, they were kind of wrinkled. Now I couldn't tell you where my iron is at home. <laughs> but at Walgreens, they have this awesome stuff called wrinkle resistant. You spray it on, it's like magic. So I went and got some wrinkle spray uh, because I knew that I wasn't going to be ironing my clothes. And, uh, but it brought a thought to my mind as I was doing that because it said right, right on the bottle, wrinkle resistant. And I thought, what would it be like for us to be sin resistant? It would be easy if we could spray something on that would just help us to resist all sin. But it's not like that. But we want our lives to be sin resistant. We don't, it doesn't mean we'll be perfect, but it does mean that in my everyday life, in my walk with Jesus, in the things that I do when I submit my life to him, it does mean that I want to live my life for him and I want to live a life pure. And I want to be sin resistant. Whoever find that spray in Walgreens, I want to. I don't want to be a slave to sin. Maybe that's a good way for us to say it. We're not slaves to sin. And we want, uh, we want to remember that so that we can be sin resistant in our lives. How do we do that? Okay, this little part here came from the general superintendent, like the president of the church in town. And I stole it because I loved it. I heard it this week, just a couple days ago. He says, holiness is spiritual and it's practical. In other words, it's a spiritual work that takes place in our heart when we surrender our life to him, when God gets all of us. And when that happens, practically, it becomes possible for us to make choices and live a life that is sin resistant, to live a life that is fully devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ. We renew our thinking, renew our minds, remind ourselves that we belong to the family of God. We're empowered by the Holy Spirit. I say that to myself so often. There are times when life is difficult, or maybe I just have a big decision to make, or there are just things that are going on and I just have to pray and cry out to the Lord and say, I need to feel today that I am empowered by your Holy Spirit. I don't feel that every day. I don't just wake up and go, woo! <laughs> but some days I do. We want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit because we belong to the family of God. We want to renew our minds and live our life for Him. We belong to Our power comes as we continue to renew our minds to know what is the truth about us in Christ, to know who we are in him. If I think of who I am in myself, I get discouraged pretty quickly. I don't know about you. I know everything that I can do well, and I know all the 10,000 things I don't do well. And so in order to live a life fully devoted to him, I need to remember that he is my life. His language is my language. His way of doing life is my way of doing life. The love of God has been lavished on us. We're children of God. When we renew our minds continually by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live in a sin-resistant state. Belonging to the family is who we are, and belonging to God defines who we are. In John's Gospel 14.2, the scripture says, In my Father's house are many rooms, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. Then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take you to be 
where I am. That's what happens after the holy life. In other words, there's room for us. I love, I love it when there's room for me at the table. I love it if someone tells me where is my place at the table. If I come to your house, tell me where to sit. Because I'll, I'll be wondering, where's the right place to sit? Where should I sit? I don't want to take, you know how families have chairs that belong to certain people? I don't want to, I don't want to sit, you know, in Nate's chair. So when we invite people to the table, when we have a place at the table, let's let them know they belong. And as we prepare for communion, I think it's really important that we need to remember that we always have a place at the table of the Lord when we love Jesus and we accept him into our hearts. I'm going to invite those who are serving to come. The Communion Supper, instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is a sacrament which proclaims his life, his sufferings, his sacrificial death and resurrection in the hope of his coming again. It shows forth the Lord's death until his return. The Supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit. It is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. All those who are truly repentant, forsaking their sins, and believing in Christ, are invited to participate in reverent appreciation. We come to the table that we may be renewed in life and salvation and be made one by the Spirit. In unity with the church, we confess our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. table in the name of Jesus Christ, who by his spirit was anointed to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, set at liberty those who are oppressed. Christ healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and established the new covenant for forgiveness of sins. We live in the hope. was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of
so we gather as the body of Christ to offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, on these your gifts. Make them by the power of your Spirit to be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you, preserve you blameless into everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you, preserve you blameless into everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you. Be thankful. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege we have to share at your table today. I ask that as we go through this week, we'll remember in the moments of our lives to keep in step with you. We love you so much and thank you for our worship today. In Jesus' name. As we close our time today, I'm going to invite Pastor Rochelle and Pastor AJ to come forward and share with us a little bit from their life. Good morning, Lakeview family. Uh, we have some bittersweet news that we'd like to share with you. Uh, several months ago, uh, District Superintendent Dr. Olivia Metcalf uh, reached out to us, and she asked if we would consider allowing our names to go before a congregation in the uh, upstate New York district. For the past several months, we've been going through the interview process, and after much prayer and the sermon, we have accepted the call to be co-lead pastors of Grace Rochester Church of the Nazarene in Rochester, New York. We'll be leaving in June. When we came to Lakeview over three years ago, we knew we had a calling to ministry, but we didn't know what that looked like for us through the wonderful people here and the opportunity to continue to grow both and develop both as people and as pastors, we're excited about following God's call, but also sad for the see you laters that are to come. We are grateful to be a part of this loving church family, grateful for the acceptance and the belonging that we have experienced here and for the opportunity to serve alongside everyone here as we grow as disciples and love our neighbors. Thanks to technology and the small world that is the Church of the Nazarene, we know this is at the end of our relationships with the people of Lakeview. Thank you for your love and your care for our family and for allowing us to grow and be sent from Lakeview. Uh, it is bittersweet, but these are the moments that I, I love, uh, as weird as that may sound, but to see people who have God's call in their life respond, and to be a church, and to be a staff, and to be a pastor that has the space and capacity to invest and pour into and send. And this church has been doing that since long before I was here. One of the key reasons that I knew this was a place where God had called me was the spirit of developing leaders and pastors and participating in God's kingdom work beyond these walls. Now, this is hard. Uh, dare I say, this sucks. <laughs> but it's what God's called us to do. And, and uh, I joke about it, and we'll talk more about it next week at our, at our annual meeting. But I think we're going to put a map in the back to begin to mark where people go from this place. 
Because as, as hard as it is, it pains me to say God's not done sending people from here. That's also exciting. Because it means God is calling, God is working, and the DS is going to be really grateful that we're sending people. He's going to be really mad at me that they're going to New York and not staying on this district. I'm probably going to get called into his office tomorrow for that. But I do know he's excited. I mean, these are the things that excite him, and he is looking for people like this and to be a church that does that. So I'm going to have them come and kneel at the altar, and we're going to surround them. So race down so you can be close. Um, Let's not suffocate them. Can you boo? No, no booing. Not yet. I'm going to leave it open if you want to speak out a prayer over them, and then I will close us here in a few moments. God, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for these two who took a chance on coming here when I was just starting out. And and interesting, the full circle of them responding to uh, words from Olivia to come, oh, you should try Lakeview. Nate's new there, and maybe there'll be something there. Lord, I thank you for that gift that she gave and encouraging them to come here. 
Lord, thank you for the work that they have done over these last three years, the ways they've invested in this community and helped us to continue to pursue our mission to be disciples, to make disciples, and to love our neighbors. Thank you for all that they have done, the ways that they have poured themselves into this church and into the lives of all the people here, the way they have served and ministered and loved and led. Lord, thank you for the ways you've grown them and continue to cultivate in them a spirit of compassion and love for their neighbors. God, thank you for the ways that you have continued to grow them as leaders and as pastors. Lord, and I pray that you would be with them, that you would continue just to give them courage and strength and sound mind. Lord, help them to go in the confidence that you have called them. Lord, as they trek across the country, God, would you give them strength for this new task? Would you help them to know that you go before them in all things and that you are the one who will provide and you will continue to give them the strength and the grace that they need? God, and would you be with us as we continue to pursue who you've called us to be? Lord, we know that it's a part of the nature of the kingdom, that people come and then they, they get sent out and are called out, and that is certainly the case for us here so would you be with us as we grieve the loss of AJ and Rochelle and Katie and Callie and Kirsten? Lord, as they move on to this next season of life, and we ask God that you would just be with us. Lord, thank you for the gift of allowing us to have them with us for these many years and for what they have done with and for us. Lord, we thank you for how you work. We thank you for your grace. And we love you and love you these two people. Would you continue to care for them? We pray these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And together we say, amen and amen. Well, as we pass, literally pass the peace, you are dismissed. Give a hug, give a handshake, and we will see you next week. Blessings.